In this nitty gritty basics Let's Play live stream, we're going to be playing American Mahjong at Mahjong time. If you haven't tried playing at Mahjong time yet, look for my link in the video description below. Send me an email and I can send you information on the 30 day VIP trial. Hopefully we'll have time to play some games and the 2023 card is active on the site. In this presentation, how to pick a hand, I'm actually going to give you a sneak peek into some of my analytics that I'll be sharing later tonight. If you would like to learn more and dig deeper and the nuances for this year's card, join us again tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern time, same place, and we'll do a watch party of the analysis. I'm going to share actionable insights and tips for a smooth transition. I want to give a quick shout out to moderators. Thank you so much for helping monitor chat today. With that, let's get started with the presentation. Can everybody hear me okay? Uh, yes, looks like we're good on YouTube. Good morning, Diane, June, hi. Okay, let me get the slideshow going. It's a very brief presentation. And then we'll get to playing the game. Uh, there we go. Can everybody see the screen? This is best viewed if you're on a laptop or desktop. I'm sure you can see it well on a tablet as well, but maybe not so much on an iPhone. Let's see here. Oh, you can actually see it pretty well on an iPhone. If you remove chat so you can see the full screen of the presentation, you should be able to see it okay. But we are going to look at some analytics just briefly. Hi, Sue. Welcome and thank you for becoming a member. Good to have you here. And I really appreciate the support. All the channel members who join in order to participate in chat, that's the perk. All that money goes to support my YouTube channel, so I truly appreciate it. All right, let's get started. How to pick a hand. We're going to start with a reminder of last week's episode where we talked about style of play. So if you want to, if you miss this one, style of play, look for the repost of the nitty gritty basics let's play live stream from last Monday. But very briefly, there are several ways that you can play this game. The first is fixed, where you pick a hand from the very beginning. You look at your tiles and you decide which hand you're going to play right from the beginning. And that's okay to do. The best way to play the game is to play an adaptive style where you don't pick a hand until you run out of discards. Basically, you identify the strength of the hand and gather tiles to support the strength of the hand. And then when you run out of discards, that's when you look at the card and pick a hand. That would be an adaptive style. You're gathering and then you're going to reassess along the way. There is a hybrid approach where you maybe play adaptive during the Charleston and then after the Charleston, you pick a hand and focus there. But you could also maybe pick a hand and then switch later, which is a little bit more of an advanced process. But we're going to talk about all of this today. So you can pick a hand from the beginning. It's best to play adaptive. And then there's a hybrid. So there is good, better, and best. And you might be asking why. Why is playing adaptive best? Well, I'll show, I'll show you why with some analytics. And again, this is a sneak peek into tonight's 
episode of Nitty Gritty Prime Time Let's Play live stream. These are the attributes on this year's card, 2023. So what you see here is the components of any given hand on the card. If you look at the first bar, the biggest bar, 84% of the hands on the card use big multiples. Big multiples are pungs and kongs or quints if you have jokers, of course. So most of the hands on the card use big multiples. Then if you look at the third bar, pairs, which is what I call a little multiple. Big multiples, pung and kong, pairs are little multiples. So there are 61% of the hands on the card use pairs. Together, that's 91%. So the idea is to target the multiples and let that be where you start. So if you look at your dealt hand and you have a multiple, whether it is a pair, a pung, or even a con, it does happen. That's where you start with your decision making. You target the multiple. That is the strength of the hand. So you would then look at the rest of your tiles and gather tiles to support the multiple and then pick a category to focus on with most of your tiles. Then as you go through the Charleston, you're going to continue to gather tiles that you can use in that category to support the multiple until you run out of discards. You're just going to gather, gather. You don't even have to look at the card, not until you run out of discards. When you run out of discards, that's when you look at the card to figure out which hands might be best for most of your tiles that support your multiples. Hopefully you can free up more discards to continue the Charleston because you want to try to do the entire nine passes. You could still pass blind, of course, but you should try to do the full Charleston because that's where you can improve your dealt hand. The game te technically doesn't start until East discards. So, by, by doing the Charleston fully, you're going to have the best opportunities to improve your dealt hand. And then when the game begins with East discard and you start picking one tile at a time, all you need to do is continue building your hand and eventually win. And we're going to talk more about that as we do some live gameplay at Mahjong time. So the next attribute that I just want to share is mixed suits. If you look at the second bar, there's 69% of the hands on the card are in mixed suits. And way over to the fifth bar on the right, one suit, 27%. Fifth bar from the right, 27%. So here, it, it, the, the bottom line is, don't be distracted by one suit options because there are way more options for mixed suits. That's not to say though that you don't ever play mixed suits. You just want to gather all the tiles that can be used for your category supporting the multiple regardless of suit. Keep all the suits, not just one suit. Now if you happen to have a predominant pattern of one suit, then go ahead and gather one suit. Now, that is a little more of a myopic view than gathering all suits. So my recommendation is to keep all numbers, all suits that can be used in the category to support the multiple. And then when you run out of discards, start whittling down to the hand level so you can free up discards either for the Charleston or the pick and discard phase of the game. So let's see. The other... Percentages are important when it comes to passing strategies and also discard strategies. So we're not going to go deep into those right now. Uh, when we do the, the commentary, when we play at Mahjong time, we'll talk about discards as we go. Um, primarily, what you want to realize here is that almost, well, 44% of the hands, it's not quite half the hands, 44% of the hands on the card use flowers. So you don't want to pass flowers. Also, 
40% of the hands on the card use like numbers. So try not to pass like numbers. It's almost as risky as passing a pair. And then dragons, 29%, they're not that prevalent on the card, but there are two dragon hands in almost every category except for quince and addition. So dragons, you can pass. And same with wins. You can see there are not that many hands with wins because they're way down here towards the right, the smaller bars. If you pass wins and dragons, just pass one at a time. Try not to pass them in the same pass or pass just one win, one dragon, and then a number tile if you can. You want to minimize passing the wins and dragons if you can. And we'll talk more about that as we go. Hopefully there'll be lots of opportunities to talk about discard strategy. So any questions about attributes? These are components of a hand. Big multiples, Multiples in general are the key to American Mahjong. American Mahjong is a game of multiples. So you want to target multiples and start there when you make that first decision on what to keep. If you don't have multiples, look for the predominant pattern, which would be one of the categories on the cart. Sometimes you might be in two. So we're going to now look at the categories and talk about gathering for the predominant pattern. These are the category statistics on the 2023 card. For this year, most of the hands are in the odds category, 14 hands or 20%, really 14 hands in odds. It just looks like a, like a, a, there's a huge selection. It looks big, but really it's not because the next category is consecutive run. Even though there are only 11 hands in consecutive run, that category alone, there are more hands that are consecutive all over the card in other categories than just in that category. So there are more consecutive run hands than there are odds. The other thing about consecutive run is that you have three numbered suits, one to nine. And of course, there's four of every tile and you can go up or down that run. So if you look in the consecutive run category, even though there are nine tiles, you can have a run of five and also two, three and four. So up to five numbers in a range and you can go up or down nine tiles. That, that whole range. So there's incredible flexibility with consecutive run. And the reason why I emphasize consecutive run is because sometimes you're going to be in between categories. If let's say you're playing maybe an odd hand and you have some potential for consecutive run, let's say there's even the same potential. Both categories would use your multiples both your categories would use most of your tiles and you don't know which one to go with. Choose consecutive run because it's more flexible and there are way more hands to choose from. So if you are in between categories and consecutive run is one of the options, go with consecutive run. There are lots of Winds and Dragons hands. You could see 11 in that category. And then 369 would be after that. Um, we have evens followed by 369 and then six hands in pairs, just four in year and addition, four or actually three in quince, and then just two hands in like numbers. But I want to talk really quickly about like numbers. Even though there's only two hands in like numbers, they are all over the card. 40% of the hands on the card use like numbers. So if you have like numbers, don't get focused on, oh, there's only two hands to choose from. That's not accurate because there are like numbers all over the card. For example, you could look at the third hand from the bottom under consecutive run. Two, there's two consecutive numbers there in two suits. That's just one of many examples. All right. So 
that is all I have on statistics. We're going to go much deeper tonight. Uh, and I am going to be sharing a lot of actionable insights for you and also tips for a smooth transition. So I hope that you'll join us again tonight. But what we're going to do now is talk about how to optimize your hand selection and when to do it. So basically what you want to do is optimize your potential by playing at that adaptive style that I shared about a little bit ago. When you get your dealt hand, look for multiples, then pick one or two categories that can use the multiples with as many of your remaining tiles as possible. So in this example, we have uh, two, three, four, five, six in dots, pair three, pair five. We have a one band pair, and a nine band, then a three crack, white dragon, and a north. The multiples are one, three, five. So that's what you target. And then you're going to keep as many tiles as you can to support the multiples and then free up discards so that you can either pass or discard. So here you might think, well, I maybe I could play little odds. And you can. Little odds would use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles. That's more, that's one more than half. Okay, so you have 13 tiles in your hand. Let's see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we have seven, seven keepers for little odds. So that would be more than half your tiles. That would be a good choice. Let's look at another example. Oh, incidentally, I just want to share, you could also maybe play two, three, four or even three, four, five, six, let's say. So there's some consecutive run potential here, but only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is where I would probably play consecutive run because you have seven of each as keepers. So instead of one, three, five, I would probably go for consecutive run, especially because there's a white dragon there and there are two hands in consecutive run in the 2023 card that can use the white dragon. So that would be eight tiles. All right, let's look at another example. Here's an example of a dealt hand where you have no multiples. If you don't have multiples, pick a category that matches the predominant pattern. And that could be, for example, three, six, nine. We have a lot of three, six, nine in here, but there's also also three, four, five, six in here. So you, you just want to choose the category that uses most of your tiles. Uh, let me see here. Hold on one second. So we're going to look at this next slide. Here you can see three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles, seven tiles in mixed suits. So you don't necessarily want to keep the dragon because you have mixed suits for consecutive run this year. The dragon hands are matching. So we probably wouldn't need to keep that white dragon. We have two nines, a white dragon and a north as discards. So we could play three, four, five, six consecutive run. But there's also potential here for three, six, nine. We have three, nine in bands, six, nine in cracks, three, six in dots. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's equal. You could play either one and there's no right or wrong, but there is good, better, and best. So probably if it were me, I would again play consecutive run because it's the same number of tiles and you have greater flexibility with consecutive run, even with mixed suits. All right, next. Stay at the category level as long as possible. You really don't even need to look at the card until you run out of discards. Then you can look at the card and figure out, well, what could I potentially play with my tiles and whittle down your options to free up discards. So you're going to keep tiles that can be used regardless of suit. Remember the percentage of mixed suits was, was it 69%, I believe? When you run out of discards, pick a category or a hand that frees up more discards so that you can continue to target the strength of your hand and gather tiles to support the strength of the hand. 
If you're between categories or hands, pick the option with no gaps. So for example, if you're playing three, six, nine, and you have no threes, here's an example of that. We have sixes and nines, but no threes. We even have two, four, five, and no threes. But you could play in here four, five, six with no gaps. So again, I would play consecutive run, three, four, five, and maybe keep the twos in case threes come in. And I would let the big numbers go with that north. So that's the concept of when you get to that point of having to pick a hand, minimize the option where you have a gap or weaknesses. Let's say that you, you have a three and then mostly sixes and nines, and then maybe you have a lot more fives and sixes, just the one three minimizes the potential for three, six, nine, because you have more fives and sixes for consecutive run. So also consider weaknesses. A weakness would be one tile for any given representation of the tile you might need. For example, three, six, nine. If we had even one three, let's say it's a three bam or a three dot, I probably would go with consecutive run as opposed to three, six, nine. So hopefully we'll have some opportunities to talk through this decision making when we play at Mahjong time. As far as passing tiles during the Charleston, do your best to mitigate the risk of the passes because you want to focus on your hand and, and gathering tiles to build your own hand. That's the first priority. But also passing tiles to your opponents can be very risky if you're not focused on those tiles that you're sending away. For example, you want to try not to pass all one suit in little numbers or maybe all one category. So you want to make your pass as benign as possible. Every pass is going to have risk. So you just want to do the best you can to make it as risk free as possible and still let your hand building be the priority. Your hand building comes first and then passing defensively is the second priority. All right. Oh, I, I want to just remind you that I have a wiki on my website. If you ever have any questions about rules of the game or even want to dig into more strategy, check out my wiki on MajLife.com. Let's play some Mahjong and see if we can have some examples of how to pick a hand. And when we do this, we're going to do one hand where we play fixed. We're going to pick a hand from the beginning, and then we're going to note the results, how many discards we have, at the end of the Charleston. And then we're also going to play adaptive and compare results. Just so you can see that American Mahjong is a game of multiples and that with that being the focus, targeting the multiples along with playing an adaptive style, those two strategies are ideal for American Mahjong. In a nutshell, that's the bottom line. Target multiples and play adaptive until you have to whittle down your options and finally pick a hand. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So we're going to play now. So I am going to present Mahjong time. All right, when we get the game going, we'll go full screen. Does anybody have any questions about how to pick a hand and why? How to pick a hand and why? You really don't need to pick a hand until you run out of discards. You gather. It's about gathering, gathering tiles to support the strength of your hand. And just as a reminder, you're not always going to start with a multiple. Sometimes you're going to have a very thin, sort of diluted, dealt hand, no multiples. That's when you look at the predominant pattern and pick a category that uses most of your tiles. Eventually, you're going to get a multiple. That's when you target the multiple and reassess completely. 
target the multiple, gather tiles to support it, and play a category that uses most of your tiles with the multiple. That's the bottom line. I hope you found that helpful. Let's go ahead and join a table and we'll talk through some decision making. Maybe what we could do is play the fixed hand with robots and then we'll do an adaptive with robots and then we'll play in live games. Does that sound good to everybody? So we'll go to games and then Mahjong school and then we'll play at a practice, a practice random wall table here. So we're going to play with robots for the first, we're going to do like a random pull. I don't know if you've seen my videos. I have skill builders that come out on Monday. I think today was a random, no, today was Charleston modeling. Last week, I think was random pulls or maybe, no, no, no. Today was random pulls. Anyway, we, we basically take 13 random tiles, 13 or 14, and you practice identifying the strength of the hand, and then you toss it in and do it again. That's called random pulls. So let's do a quick example of that. So here we have a flower, one, two, four, seven, nine in bands, pung of fours, pair of sevens. We have two, three, six, seven, nine in dots. So what I would do here is look at the four and the seven, and I would choose a category that would use either both of those or one or the other with most of my tiles. So for example, here, we could play one, two, three, four, and it doesn't matter what the suits are. We would just keep every one, two, three, four. So let's just look at that really quick. I'm gonna separate it with the flower so you can see and easily count your tiles. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles. We may or may not use the flower. So that's kind of a frosting on the cake, I guess, because we're going to use it whether we pick the seven or the four. So if we build around the four, which is a pung, we could maybe play one, two, three, four of some kind. We don't even look at the card. We're just going to gather the tiles that we could potentially use for the category of consecutive run. So the other option would be to play six, seven, uh, really six and seven. We have a, a gap between seven and nine here. We also have no fives, so I wouldn't consider, consider big odds, let's say. So this seven, the, the, the tiles with sevens is really weak because we have gaps and we also have weakness because we have only one six. And again, a gap because we have no five. So clearly consecutive run using one, two, three, four is going to be ideal for these tiles. Now there is one hand that we could do with consecutive run, but it would require filling two gaps. We could do four, five, six, seven with dragons, the concealed hand, but that's actually three gaps and they're all pairs. I would not do that. Instead, I would focus on one, two, three, four, break up the seven, pass as defensively as I can and gather tiles for one, two, three, four. So in this case, even though you have two multiples, sometimes you're not going to be able to use all of them. You're going to go with what you can use most of around the strength of the hand. And in this case, it's the four. All right, we're gonna exit here and we're gonna do another one. We're gonna do one more random pull and then we'll do Charleston modeling. So we're gonna go back to Mahjong School. And incidentally, you can play in the Mahjong School at Mahjong time free 24 seven. If you don't have an account at Mahjong Time, you can still play in Mahjong School, free 24-7 against robots. And the robots are not smart. I have to admit that. And there is a feature request that's been submitted by me to have the option of playing against smarter robots. And Slava did accept that as a feature request for a future build. 
So hopefully there'll be smarter robots in the future. Okay, let's see here. We're going to join this table right here. Does anybody have any questions so far about building around multiples, really targeting the multiple, then gathering tiles to support it? That's the idea. So it looks like we do have two multiples here. We have five, six, eight in BAMs, one, two, five, eight in cracks, pair one, four, five, seven in dots, and then a pair of white dragons. So the multiples are the white dragon and the ones. That's what I would target, one and white dragon. So then you think to yourself, well, what can I play with ones and white dragons? There is like numbers. That's a potential. But you could still maybe do consecutive runs. So I would keep the two. We don't have any other ones. So we're going to let that go for a minute. We could maybe do consecutive run with or without the dragon. We'll, we'll find out soon. But if we happen to get threes, we might be able to play little odds. So I would hold the fives. This one too. So we have the potential for either little odds or consecutive run. Maybe like numbers if we get more ones. So I would discard the bigger numbers and the four and start there. So we're targeting the multiple. We're gathering tiles that can be used in one category or more. Here we're in between like numbers, potentially consecutive run or little odds, all considering the two multiples that we have. Any questions about this situation? It's a bit of a challenge. So this is a, a second random pull, but we can continue with Charleston modeling now. So let's just see how this develops. What we're going to do is gather. We're going to gather for three categories, and we're not going to even look at the card, not yet. If we get ones, we'll keep them. If we get consecutive tiles, we'll keep them. If we get threes, they happen to be consecutive as well, one, two, three, or we could do little odds maybe. So let's do a pass and see what we get. Oh, let's go full screen. Why not keep the four? Because it is isolated. We're, if we're playing one, two, three, four, we have no three, and that is a gap. We have options for little odds. And here we have somewhat of a risky pass. We have six, seven, eight. So I would probably Let's see here, keep maybe, let's see, I would definitely pass one of the eights. In this case, maybe keeping the four for one pass would be good because I would rather pass six, seven, eight than four, six, eight, because four, six, eight is one category. Actually, so is the seven. It's really six, one half dozen the other in this case. Let's reassess real quick. I want to show you something else. You might think, well, why not play four, five, six, seven? If we were to play, let's say four, five, six, seven, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six tiles. We had a lot more the other way. We have eight. Well, really one more, but three, we have options of multiple categories. Whereas if we play four, five, six, seven, we're not leveraging the multiples. We'd have to break up two pair. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend focusing on one, two for now, or little odds, one, three, five. And by the way, if we happen to get fives instead of ones, we could play like numbers with fives. We have all the fives. Questions from Carol. Okay, so I answered the why not keep the four, four, five soap. Well, that could work. And we're actually going to keep the four because we could pass six, seven, eight. Let's just see what we get. If we were to play four, five dragon of some kind, we have no flower. That's a pair gap. And we'd have to break up a pair. 
I'd rather use the pair. So the focus is on the multiples as opposed to one suit with a corresponding dragon. It's really more about leveraging the multiples, which right now is one, one crack and white dragon. That's going to be much stronger than four or five white dragon. So let's just see how this develops. We're going to keep the four and let's see what we get. We're looking for new multiples to form, of course. That would be ideal. We have two, three, four now. So instead of the focus being on potentially like numbers, we have a predominant pattern of one through five at the moment. Now, there's something that I want to share about consecutive run and the range of tiles that you're gathering. When you're looking at this category, you have one, two, three, four hands, four out of 11 hands in one suit. And of those, only two span five numbers. For the mixed suit options, and really even the one suit options, there are also ranges that go up to four. So you can do two numbers in a range, three or four numbers in a range, up to five. The mixed suit options are up to four numbers, so you don't need all five numbers in a range. So we really don't need all the fives here. We have a one crack. We could maybe still play little odds, and we're at a place where we have to make a choice because we have all consecutive numbers plus the pair of white dragons. So you might think to yourself, okay, well, why not play four or five white dragon? That is not the predominant pattern here. It, it, we're in consecutive run, but by choosing four or five dragon, we would use four tiles. All these other tiles would go away. So there are other, other options that will use more of our tiles. So not only do you want to target your multiple, you want to try to use most of your tiles. That would be optimizing and maximizing, which are two techniques in American Mahjong that can optimize your potential to build your hand quickly. So let's look at what else we could do with these tiles. This is a really good deal because we have lots of opportunity to build a hand in consecutive run using different tiles. But you could also even play little odds, one, three, five. So if we were to play, let's say, two, one, two, three, four, we would let the fives go and we would focus on one, two, three, four. We even have a hand in here. I'm going to separate it with the white dragon. One, two, crack, three, four, bam. There is a hand right there that uses one of the multiples and five tiles. This is the second hand down. Second hand down, we would let the eight go for sure. That we know can go. I would not pass two fives. Pass, in my opinion, passing like numbers is almost as risky as passing a pair. So I rarely do that. I'll only do that if I know what hand I'm playing and I have no gaps. In, in here, we, we have a hand where, that we could play and there are no gaps, but it's very weak. We have only one of the each, each of the other numbers that we need for that hand. That would be weak, very weak. So let's look at maybe another way to go here. What about if we were to focus on, let's see, we could do what about one, two, three, four, five, fourth hand down. Here we have a single one, a single two. We have no three. Maybe we could use the joker for that. It's a pong, so we could technically. And then we could do a four dot five crack, or no, no, it would be four dot five bam, four tiles. We could also maybe do four bam, five dot instead. So that would give us options. So that's six tiles with options. 
six tiles with options. And that would leave us with tiles that we could pass. We would be breaking up a one though. Let's look really quick at little odd potential instead. Let's see if we can find a hand that will use both of our multiples. So we know we can let the eight go. That can go for sure. What if we were to look at the mixed suit dragon hand? This is the fifth hand down. One, two, three, four, fifth hand down. One, three, and one suit. One, a, a Kong of dragons in a second suit. And then three, five, and a third suit. So let's start with here the dragon and the one. So we would need one, three in cracks, three, five in bams. Maybe we can use the joker for the missing three. That would use both multiples. So we could play little odds and use both multiples. And that's probably what I would do. So I say we keep the fives because they can be used in different little odd hands. We have a two crack and a four bam we could let go of. Maybe we keep the four dot to use with that white dragon if we get flowers, let's say, and maybe build up a multiple with the four or five, we can ditch the one. So here we have two crack, four bam, eight bam. That's pretty risky. But I think two bam, four, eight, all bams, that would be even more risky. So we're going to give ourselves the best opportunity to build our own hand and pass as defensively as we can with our remaining tiles. So we'll let two, four, eight go. Yes, it's risky, but it's the best we can do. And that's okay. Did I miss another question? It looked like I, I answered the question from Carol. Are we all good to go now? We're going to pass. So we're looking at little odds, maybe consecutive run. We'll see. We've got a one, three, and a three. Check it out. One, three, three, five, dragon. We have an extra one crack that we really don't need. But this, oops, this is going to use now three multiples. One, three, crack, white, dragon, three, bam, five. I would focus there for sure. We're using three multiples with that dragon hand in odds. So let's look at what we have to pass. We have a two, four, five. Two, four, five. Let's see. Three, maybe what we could do. Let's see. One, three, five, three, five. One, three, five, five. One, three, five. I think I would do two, three, five. I was thinking maybe we could keep the three crack or the five crack and let the five dot go but we have a four, five, and one suit there. I'd rather pass one of each suit. All right, so we're going to pass two, four, five. We're focused on one, three, five. We could maybe let this one crack go. Maybe, for example, pass, keep the two and let the one go because we don't need all the ones with this, this hand here. We need just a pair of one cracks in this case. There are other one, three, five hands so that we could do with that one crack. For example, if we happen to get a flower, we could play one, three, five dot, one crack, three bam, five dot with a flower. That would be the fourth hand down. Let's see. No, third hand down, third hand down. So let's keep the five dot and let the two bam go. One of each suit. All right, next. We're really looking for a three crack five bam. Let's see if we can get it. A white dragon would be nice too. Okay, now here's another uh, little odd hand. This this hand really wanted to be little odds. Look at that. We have only two tiles to pass. Okay, now here's an interesting situation. If this were your hand, would you stop the Charleston? We're at that place right now where we can stop the Charleston and play little odds. We could even maybe play like numbers with threes. We have a gap, no flowers, so I probably wouldn't do that. But you might think, well, look at all these little odd tiles, and we have 
three multiples. Maybe we stop the Charleston here. We are currently in between either little odds or like numbers. So instead of stopping the Charleston and missing out on up to nine more tiles to help us build our hand, I would free up one tile to continue. It behooves you to continue the Charleston. Otherwise, you're turning down nine potential tiles to help improve your starting position when he discards that first tile to start the game. Technically, we haven't really started the game. It starts when East discards. Okay, so Sue says stop. Carol says don't. I say don't. I say we keep going. So we have two tiles to pass. Oh, we're going to say yes. We're, we're going to keep going. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, we're going to say yes to the Charleston. I thought I just said yes to stopping. Okay, so we have a hand with no gaps and three multiples. We can let this one crack go. We have one three in cracks, white dragon, three five in bams. Let's see, what are the other options? Because we have really three other tiles to pass. We could play one three crack, three five bam, second hand down. So I would probably keep that one crack. I would give up on either the three dot or the five dot. We could do, let's see, one, three, five in mixed suits, one crack, three bam, five dot. I think I would let the three dot go. Even though we have a gap of no flower, we might get it. You never know. Okay, Diane said no, don't, oh no, don't stop. Yep, we're, we're already going. Here we go. Three, six, eight, we're going to pass. We're still looking for a three crack or a five bam. No keepers, but we did get a four bam. So here we have consecutive run a little bit, but we have a pung of ones and a pair of white dragons. In the consecutive run category, even though we have three, four, five, we wouldn't be able to use the white dragon because all the, the two dragon hands in consecutive run are matching they're corresponding so we wouldn't be able to use the dragon i would let the four go and keep that five for a little odd option let's see there's a little bit of one three five seven nine using all five numbers but we have no nine so that is a gap and i would let it go we don't have a nine. We're going to focus where we have no gaps. One, three, five, little odds. We've got a three and a five again, three, five. Let's just kind of reassess here. It's not a multiple, but look at all the one, three, five we have here. One, three, five. One, three, five in cracks, pung of ones, pair three, five bam, three, five and dot singles. So we definitely can let the two go. We could play one, three, crack, three, five in BAMs. I probably at this point would let the three go and maybe this five crack. We have one, three, three, five, still no gaps for that dragon hand. We could still maybe play one, three in cracks, three, five in BAMs. That's two options using most of our multiples, if not all. So I would pass fully and let these three tiles go. What good is three or five dot? The five dot might be useful if we get a flower. We could play one, three, five mixed, pardon me, mixed suits, third hand down. The three dot is not as useful because we have a three bam pair. If we play the second hand down, we're going to use the three bam, not the three dot, because we have a multiple with the three bam. So let's pass two, three, five. We're focused on three crack and five bam. Those are the ideal keepers for us. No keepers here. All right. Well, we're doing the optional cross now. We have three tiles to pass. I would pass these 100%. These are just fine to pass. Eight, six, nine. 
I don't cringe so much at 369 because they're so far apart and you have to have three specific numbers for that category. So I, I don't get EBGBs from passing 369. We got the three dot back. Okay, so we're going to keep it. And we have really one, two, three, four discards. So when you're practicing with Charleston modeling, after the Charleston, count the number of discards you have outside of the category that you've chosen. So here we've chosen to play little odds. We have a couple of options. We, and by keeping all our little odds, we have only two discards. Let's say that we even talk at the hand level. We have a hand with no gaps. We would have to let the one go. That's five discards. Because we have a hand with no gaps, and we have three multiples, I would say that we're a contender for this game. We could actually win this game. And we're going to keep going. Do you guys want to keep going? Or do you want to do another Charleston modeling? Do you want to go into the pick and discard phase of the game? Or should we do another Charleston modeling? I think what I would do is keep this one, though, because we could do one, three, three, five. I would say we have four discards with options which makes us a contender for this game. I'll take a consensus. Put a yes in the chat if you want to keep going with the game. Put a no. OK, so Sue says do another Charleston. OK. OK, we're going to do another Charleston. We'll do another Charleston. Okay, so we're going to exit. And then we'll do another Charleston modeling. So let's go to the random. You want to pick the random, a practice table random wall. That's the table you want to play at. Let's see if we get some fun tiles to work with here. So play at the category level, target the strength, and gather. So this time we have a flower and a couple of jokers here. And this is going to be great because we have no multiples except for the jokers. <laughs> so we have a flower, eight man, one, three, five, nine in cracks, one, three, seven, eight, nine in dots and a white dragon. So tell me in, in the chat, what category would you focus on? And what would be your first discards? So put the category and three, you know, like, let's say 8B for 8BAM. So kind of use a shorthand. So tell me what category you would play and what would be the three discards for the first Charleston pass. I'll give you like 30 seconds here. Or actually... 10 seconds. We have two eights, two nines, two threes, two ones. There is some like number potential in here. All right. I would play odds. So I'm going to use the flower to separate. We're going to let the eights go. We have 1359, 1379. We could play big odds or little odds. Or we could do maybe the concealed hand. I suppose we could even do the second hand from the bottom. There are one, two, three, four hands that use all, four, all five numbers. Okay, Sue so would play odds, discard eight dot, one dot, and a soap. Not soap. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. What do we have? We have one three white dragon corresponds seven nine white dragon. Oh, look, there is a consecutive run potential there. Seven eight nine. Let's just look at seven eight nine just to see what, what we have to work with. Seven eight nine with or without the dragon. 
seven, eight, nine, with or without the dragon, we have one, two, three, four, five, six tiles. If we played little odds, probably without the dragon because we have five tiles, five tiles towards little odds. But we also have some potential maybe for one hand, the, the concealed hand, one, three, five, seven, nine. That's five tiles. We could maybe still do even one, three, one, nine in dots, let's say, with three, five, seven in the middle, second hand from the bottom. I think that what I would do here is play consecutive run, seven, eight, nine. It's going to be a challenge, though, because we have nines, which are on the edge of the run. We can only go down from here. So there's not a whole lot of flexibility. If we happen to get a six, we might be able to use it for six, seven, eight, nine. If we get threes, we could maybe do threes and sixes. We could maybe do three, six, nine. So let's see if we were to keep the threes for a potential three, six, nine. So we're in between in this scenario, three, six, nine or seven, eight, nine. We wouldn't be able to keep both for sure. Uh, let's see. Carol would consider the concealed hand one, three, five, five, seven, nine. Okay. Let's just drag that off and look at it. One, three, five. And then it would be five, seven, nine. That's five tiles, five tiles. We would let all these go right here. One, three, five in cracks, five, seven, nine in dots. There is potential for that. I think that there's greater potential to play consecutive run, seven, eight, nine, with or without the dragon. And if sixes come in, we can maybe switch to three, six, nine. So let's see what happens if we play seven, eight, nine, or three, six, nine. Here's the challenge. We have like numbers with ones. I would not pass that. I would pass a one dot, a five, and then I would let something go. In three, six, nine, there are two dragon hands and they are opposite. Um, so you have three, six, nine pairs with opposite dragons. We don't have another dragon. So I would take that fourth hand down off the table. We have maybe the knitted potential there, three, six, nine dragon. So the six and the nine match, we don't have any sixes. So probably I would let one of the threes go and focus on seven, eight, nine. I would focus on seven, eight, nine and let one of the threes go. So probably either way, it's going to be risky. Let's see. I think I would, it, it really doesn't matter. It's six, one half dozen, the other, I would let the three crack go. Let's just see what happens here. I think that there's potential for either consecutive run or odds. But remember when I was sharing about the sheer number of odd or uh, of consecutive run hands, if you're in between, go with consecutive run because of the flexibility alone. So let's see what happens with consecutive run. I also asked for another feature request where we can redo a deal. So we could maybe try for odds with the same tiles, but it's not in the game yet, but he did like that idea. So we may see that as an option. Okay. So we have one odd keep or one nine. So we can do seven, eight, nine. We didn't get any sixes. We have one, two, four, and I would pass that one, two, four. We still have a three. We could, if we get a six, we could switch to three, six, nine, but we have a lot of seven, eight, nine right now. So let's see what happens. We got a six. Let's reassess because we have only two tiles right now to pass. We have either six, seven, eight, nine, or three, six, nine. If we look at three, six, nine, we happen to have all the nines. 
So let's look at options where there are multiple nines or multiple like numbers, okay? Like numbers is what we're looking for. There's one hand. No, 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 two, two hands. Third one down, pair, pair, pong, pong, kong. Three, six in one suit, six, nine in a second suit, and then nine in a third suit. Three, six, nine. We have one, three, and one, six. So that would be difficult to play that hand because we have gaps. So I would table that. I would take it off the table, actually. So we're going to set that one aside. The other one is three, six, nine in one suit, single pair Pong. This is the third hand from the bottom. And then we have Kongs of like numbers, three sixes or nines. We do not have a one suit three, six, nine. If you look at all the six, seven, eight, nine consecutive run, that is much stronger than three, six, nine. So I would discard the three and pass one, two, three. We're going to gather seven, six, seven, eight, nine of some kind and let the one, two, three go. What do you guys think of that? Pass one, two, three. Here we go. We're looking for a multiple still. We still don't have a multiple in here, but we finally have it, a six crack. So here we have a pair of sixes. Here's a seven. We have six, seven, eight, nine, and one discard. Six, seven, eight, nine. When a new multiple forms, or if you're playing the predominant pattern with no multiples and you finally get a multiple, target the multiple and reassess completely. So we're going to start with the six crack. That is the strength of the hand, that pair. We're going to look at the rest of our tiles and gather tiles that can be used to help build a hand with the six because that's the multiple. Remember when I shared about with pairs and pungs and kongs, the big little multiples and big multiples together, 91% of the hands on the card. So by targeting the multiple, we're going to optimize our potential to complete a hand because eventually you're going to need those. So that's why it's best to start there. So we're reassessing. We could play six, seven, eight, nine, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine. I would keep all six, seven, eight, nine. We have one tile to pass though. In mixed suits, I don't think the three or the white dragon is going to be helpful because there are two hands that use dragons and they're in one suit. The white dragon won't go with the six crack. And we have no other sixes, so I wouldn't even consider like numbers. There is an isolated nine. So if these were my tiles, I would pass the white dragon, the nine crack, and the three band and keep going. And gather six, seven, eight, nine of some kind. Six, seven, eight, nine of some kind. We don't even have to look at what hand to play at, because now we have our discards, three discards. You can kind of stop the analysis because you have your discards. So we're going to say yes, and we're going to keep going. We're going to pass one, white dragon, which I usually don't do, but we've got to build our hand. That's priority one. And then we pass as safely as possible. That's the best we can do because we have all keepers besides those. And the reason, again, we're passing the nine is because it's isolated from our six. We have a three bam, but no other six to go with that three bam for a three, six, nine option. So I wouldn't consider playing three, six, nine here. I would stick with consecutive run because of the opportunities for consecutive run ha uh, hands. There are far more to choose from. So we're looking at six, seven, eight, nine at the moment. We have an eight. There is a four in here. There's even now some two, four, six, eight. Let's just look at that really quick. We still don't have a new multiple. We're still building around the six. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles towards two, four, six, eight. The two is isolated though. We don't have, if you look at the hands in two, four, six, eight, the two, four are in one suit. 
whether it's all one suit for the hand or mixed suits where the two four are in the same suit. So the two is isolated. Therefore, it's a discard. And with not having a two, a useful two, then two, four, six, eight is now not an option. So I would let that go and still build around six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's see with a pair of sixes. This is when we would have to look at the hand level because we have only two discards. So now we have to pick a hand. This is when you pick a hand, when you start running out of discards, we've run out of a discard. We need one more. So we need to look at the hand level now to free up one tile. So we could play maybe six, seven, eight, and one suit with a flower. Six, seven, eight, and one suit. That'd be the fifth hand down. We could even play it in mixed suits. Six crack, seven dot, eight bam. So maybe we let the nine, okay, the two and the four are going to go. So maybe we let the nine bam go. But we could also maybe play six, seven crack, eight, nine bam. We could play six, seven crack, eight, nine dot. Because we have an option with eight, nine dot, maybe what we could do is let the nine bam go as one of the options because we're still left with an option for six, seven, eight, nine second hand down using cracks and dots. Don't forget addition. We have no flowers, Ruth. Oh, one. I'm sorry. We do have a flower. I apologize. Okay. Thank you for that. In this case, we're focused on six, seven, eight, nine, which are not in addition, but thank you for the reminder. Saving threes is an option. Well, we don't have, we had really one three on occasion during the Charleston, but that is a fun category to look for. Yeah, we let the three go. That's right. Okay, so six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine. I would let the nine bam go here. We're just going to keep gathering. One, two, four. We don't need those. Even the two, remember the two where I was sharing that the two, four should be in the same suit. In this case, they're different. So I wouldn't be distracted by evens with six, two, four, six, eight. Not in, not in this case. Oh, you're reminding yourself. I need the reminder too, Ruth. I'm not, this is the first time I'm using, using the card in a game, actually. Okay, now here, we do have a 3-6 now here. 3-6 in cracks. We have our robot winning three tiles. What I'm thinking is, why not let the 8 bam go now that we don't have the 9? If we happen to get a six dot, let's say we could play a mixed suit three, six, nine hand. We could still play six, seven, eight in one suit, or we could play six, seven, eight, nine in mixed suits. The eight bam is not so helpful at the moment. Let's pass three, one, five, eight. Six, seven. You know what, though? Hold on. There's another option there with that eight. Let's let the three go. The second hand from the bottom, four flowers, six, seven, and cracks with like numbers with eights. There's no gaps there. Here's the hand. <clears throat> six, seven, pair, pair, pung, pung, eights, four flowers. We could also do six, seven, eight in one suit, or we could do six, seven, crack, eight, nine in dots. We could pass one, three, five, or we can maybe make it a little better by giving up the seven. I think we have a strong potential for that second hand from the bottom. Let's give up the seven. Although, you know what, we could do six, seven, eight mixed suit Kongs with that seven and still use our multiple. Sec, uh, this would be the fifth hand down on the right. Six crack, seven dot, eight ma'am. Let's let the three go and see what happens. 
So we're playing six, seven, eight, nine of some kind. We got a nine crack. Okay, that's interesting. There is a concealed hand there, but we have a gap, no red dragon. But look at our choices here. This is one reason why I think consecutive run is so powerful because we've got options, six, seven, eight, nine. We still really don't have to pick a hand because we have discards. And I probably wouldn't pick a hand. I would wait and see how the hand develops with each pick now because we're now at the end of the Charleston. So do you guys want to do another Charleston modeling or should we play this one out? I'll take the first response. Yes or no. Can do Should we do another Charleston? Yes or no. Charleston modeling. We'll go with the first chat. Where we could continue into the pick and discard phase of the game. We have 45 minutes, so I'm hoping that we'll get a play a, a game through at least one or two. Play. Okay, we're going to play. So we are the dealer. We're going to discard the four dot. We still Ooh, have God. some potential for three, six, nine in mixed suits. Three, bam, six, crack, nine dot. Five bamboos. This would be the second hand down. Hmm. So we're, we may even be able to use that three. But now we have a new multiple, the seven. So I would use six, seven and let the three go. We still don't have to pick a hand. Three bamboo. We have options. We could do six, seven, eight, eight, second hand from the bottom. Bamboo. We could do six, seven, eight in one suit, which is three the fifth bamboo. hand down on the left. We could do six, seven, eight, nine. I'm Two thinking bamboo. the seven dot can go next. If you can, always have identified one discard so that you can help the game move along. So the East, we totally don't need wins. We can let that go. East win. And we have a discard next, the seven Four dot. Hurricanes. If an eight bam or an eight dot go down, no, we're going to have to decide if we want to pung. We need more flowers if we play that second hand from the bottom, though. Six bamboo. Two crack. We have no four, so I wouldn't be distracted by two, four, six, eight. We're going to let it go. Two characters. One dot. Five characters. Okay, we're looking for eights. Eight bam, eight dot primarily, eight maybe an characters. eight crack. Okay, now I wouldn't call that because we'd have to use both of our jokers. I would rather look for another opportunity maybe to use the other eights. We got a joker. Let's let the seven go. So now we have seven to decide, bad. are we going to play six, seven, eight, six nine? Characters. This is where we have to decide. Do we want to use that as a pair with the second hand from the bottom and do pair, pair, pung, pung with a Kong of flowers? Or should we play the second hand down in mixed suits? where we can do pair Kong or Pung Kong, Pung Kong. So the option would be also six, seven, eight Kongs. And we have the potential here for six, seven, eight Kongs right there. I'm thinking really the nine crack can go. We have to make a choice. We could still maybe do pair, pair, Pung Pung and hope for flowers. I would rather play where I can use any number of jokers and not hope for flowers and go with Pung Kong Pung Kong. So probably what I would do here is play the second hand down in mixed suits. We could maybe even keep the nine and play one suit, Pung Kong Pung Kong. So I would Pung the six crack and go for hmm. the second hand down, either in mixed suits or one suit. And I would throw away my riskiest tile, which is gonna be the flower. So we picked a hand. Flower. We picked a hand, second hand down, in one suit or mixed suits, we have an option, which is another nice thing about consecutive run. Eight Not only do you have an option with your run, but you have an option with the suits, which is true really for every category. 
Uh, all right, we're going to pass. With this particular hand, we do have options. We're playing Pung Kong, Pung oh Kong. God. Seven dot. We really don't need that. The eight already went down, so let's discard that. The seven is out too. Eight bamboo. So we need to Kong the seven and then Pung the Five eight, dots. Kong the nine. Oh. So we still need to draw Please well work. to make this work. Five dot. We need a keeper here. A joker will do. Seven dot. So now we want to look at what is out. Nine dots. Okay, so here we have to decide what to do because we could Kong that. We're actually set for, for all of that. I would just go ahead and Kong because either way we're going to need to use jokers. So let's Kong, Kong. and we'll let the nine go. And we nine have one discard seven. right now. We can Kong the seven crack. We could pump the eight dot. We have one discard at the moment. Now, with the exposures Probably. that we have, Pung of sixes in one suit with a Kong of nines, this could be two bamboo, a couple of hands. So I wouldn't be too concerned about being found out. We, as far as what we're playing, with two just two bamboo. exposures, we still have a little bit of wiggle room as to what North hand we're North. playing. Our hope is that we're going to draw a keeper so we're one bamboo. still semi-stealth mode where no one knows exactly what we're playing. We still have one three discard nine. to let go of at the moment. Huh. So we have a three, five in dots in front of us. Flower. We want to keep that in mind. East wind. White dragon. We're going to let that go right away. White dragon. Flower. Five characters. Eight bam. Okay, maybe we can get a Joker exchange here. No, nine bam. Nine bamboo. Okay, so we are still waiting for our tiles. We're hoping to draw. It would be great if we can do a Joker exchange so we can stay Seven concealed as much as possible. The minute you have three exposures, everyone's going to know what hand you're playing. Okay, we do not need a one bam. One bamboo. Flower. South wind. Four characters. We do not need a two. Two dot. I'm trying to figure out what the robot is playing. Two characters. I'm not familiar enough with the, I won't, this is my first time playing. So I'm sitting Four here bamboo. looking at three, five, pung, pung, three, Six five, bamboo. one suit, pung, pung, three crack. We can let that go. Three characters. Flower. Seven bamboos. I know. I don't think robots will play a invalid exposure. So I'm trying to figure out South wind. with threes and fives as pungs together. Oh, five bam. It's already five out. Bamboo. Three, four, five, six. Three, four. Oh, Seven thank bamboo. you. Thank you, Ruth. Okay, we're going to Kong. Kong. And now we'll throw the eight. And of course, everybody knows we need a eight yep, characters. three, four, Pung Kong. I'm not used to the shape. Three, four, four five, bamboos. six. Three, four, five, six. So they need a four dot Kong. Two bamboos. And two are out. And then they need a six dot Kong. Seven bamboos. We're looking for an eight dot to win or a joker exchange. We're going to throw the four. Four. Dot. There are two out. Four bamboos. So now they're in trouble. They're going to need three jokers. Two characters. But they can use any number of jokers. All right. So we have one, three three Seven exposures. Dots. Or shoot, one just went away. We one have two dead. exposures with jokers. Maybe we'll get a joker exchange. Oh, let's see if they Kong. Six dot. 
Nope. Now they're going to need a joker for their six. We need an eight dot to win. Three characters. If we draw a seven crack or nine dot, that would be Two great. Dot. Three dot is out. Three dot. White dragon. Nine characters. We need a keeper. Three bamboo. Keeper. Red dragon. That's a fresh Red tile. Dragon. Let's see if someone takes it. Nope. There was a hesitation Seven though. Bamboos. Two dots. Two bamboo. Okay, we need a keeper now. We got it. Exchange for Mahjong. Seven characters. So we got Mahjong. We did it. Pung Kong Pung Kong. Second hand down on the right. All right, we're going to do it again. We'll play again. So we'll go to Mahjong School and find a practice. Look at all these people practicing. Okay, we're going to go here. New game. Okay, this will be interesting. We have one nine in BAMs, nine crack, one four, six, eight in dots, pair one, pair four, pair eight. Red dragon, white dragon, west and south. This is going to be challenging because our multiples don't necessarily go together. We can't use a one, four, eight. But we can use two, four, six, eight, even though we have a gap. We could maybe get a two during the Charleston. I think if we build around the ones, it's going to be super weak. We have a pair of ones and a one bam. So let's say, for example, we maybe try for like numbers, five tiles. If we try for two, four, six, eight, we have six tiles. There is a mixed suit option, though, with two, four, six, eight with dragons, second hand from the bottom. And there's even that concealed hand with a dragon. Three, four, five, six in dots. Three, four, five, six in. Are you talking about for this game at the moment? Oh, let's see. Okay. We're, we're going to let a wind go. If you're not playing winds, let them go. I think we should break up the one and let a nine go. And focus on four, uh, the dots and white and the dragons. Let's just see what we get. So now the ones and the nine can go. We have a two. So we're going to keep it. If we're playing evens, we need twos in here. It'd be nice if we can get a four bam before long. Let's let the south go with maybe a nine and one of the ones. We do have some, a little bit of four, five, six in there, but that five doesn't really fit with the dots. We have no five dot. We can keep it though, because we do have tiles we can pass. So we're not picking a hand, not yet. We have too many discards really. Okay, now we have another six, eight, so clearly, two, four, six, eight is the predominant pattern. We have a pair of ones in here. Anytime you build a new multiple, just quickly reassess. In this case, our predominant pattern is with two, four, six, eight. So we need to look at what we have here and see what can go. We need one discard. I'm kind of thinking the red dragon can go. We have our multiples with four and eight. That's where I would focus. We could maybe even do like numbers with eights if we get a flower. Let's see. We have to let something go, though. Two, four, six, eight, dragon. 
six, eight, like numbers with eights or like numbers with sixes. Let's let the six BM go. Okay, Diane, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Everyone, thank you all for coming to the live stream. Okay, now we have five, seven. Here's another multiple with the one. So here's five, seven, five, four, five, six, seven. We have some potential for consecutive run. Uh, really with our multiples though, we should keep going for sure. With our multiples, really the four and the eight can only be used in consecutive or in evens. I think we should break up the one and then let the seven go and still focus on actually let's keep the evens. We're going to let one, five, seven go. Oh, I see Diane. I get it. The three, five, seven. I thought you were saying you had to go. <laughs> okay. So we did pick up another four. We're just going to gather all evens, no matter what suit it is. And we're going to do the best we can with our passing. So we'll keep the four and just see how it develops. We have a six again, six bam. We'll keep it. And now we have one five. We have to let something go here. So we have four, six, eight in dots. We have two, six, eight in bams. Really this four is isolated. We have no jokers. So let's think about maybe the pair hand, even though we have no flowers, the pair hand, third one from the bottom, uses two suits. Let's let the four crack go. We could still maybe use the dragons and switch to like numbers with eights if we get flowers, or maybe we could even do Let's see. I guess it would have to be the two, the two eight and bams with the dragons if we play that second hand from the bottom. We're really hoping for a two dot in here. Let's let the four go and see what happens. No keepers. We got like numbers with nines. We'll break it up. We definitely need to keep passing. We do have six, seven, eight, nine in here. Just as a real quick peek, we have six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tiles. But they are, they're a bit, there are a lot of gaps and weaknesses. We definitely can pass the one. The seven, nine, there's no eight in there for consecutives to help draw them together. So I probably would let maybe the nine go. And then we need to let something else go. What about the seven crack and nine bam instead of passing seven, nine and cracks together? Let's see what happens here. So we're playing two, four, six, eight. We have one discard there that can go. No keepers. We're going to be an underdog on this game. Okay, let's discard nine crack. Actually, let's let the one go. One character. Here's five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, one seven, there. eight. Six, seven. We do have the nine. One there is there. some six, five through nine there. Six, seven, eight, nine, five bamboo. Let's just see how this develops. We got the two finally. Okay, so now that we have no gaps with two, four, six, eight, I probably would let this nine crack go. Nine characters. We still have some potential for consecutive Three run characters. four, five, six, seven, or five, six, seven, eight. Nine bamboo. But two, four, six, eight looks really good to me. Uh -huh. Seven dots. Pong. One character. Let's see if we can gather two, four, six, eight here. Pong. Four characters. Oh, there's a consecutive tile joining our four, six, four, five, six. Let's let the 
odd numbers go here in the band. Seven bamboo. Let's see here. We have five, six, five, Eight six, dots. four, five, six. We kind of have to make a choice here. Let's see. Actually, if we're playing the concealed hand with dragons, that's con we won't be able to call that. If we play two, four, six, eight in one suit, we would need a Kong, and we are not ready. So we have to pass. Even the two, four, six, eight second hand from the bottom with dragons, we have the wrong suit with our dragons. We really need a green dragon in there. So we're going to pass. Seven characters. We have some potential in here for four, five, six consecutive three run. Characters. So we're going to keep it in mind. There's a three now. So we have two, three, four, five, no gaps. We have to make a choice right now. I think what I would do here, if this were my hand, let's see, two, four, two, four, six, eight, two, three, four, five. Two, three, bam, four, five, dot, or two, four, six, eight, and one suit, four, five, six, dragon. Let's see. I think what I would do is let the eight, bam, go and keep consecutive eight, run in eight, mind. Eight. Consecutive eight, run eight, has eight. so many more options. Somebody want, wanted that three, bam, I think. Eight characters. So we're still looking at two, four, six, eight, but oh, we could man. also do two, three, four, five. That five crack is really isolated. We have four, five, two, three, five. I think we should let it go. The dragons, we could still maybe, mm, I'm thinking let's keep the five and let the dragon go at this point. Red dragon. We might still be able to use the white dragon with the concealed two, four, six, Green eight hand. Dragon. We're still gathering. We really don't have to pick a hand yet. We're in between Two categories. Dots. We're in between two, four, six, Five eight, characters. or consecutive run. We definitely don't need the nine. Nine characters. White dragon. Uh, that would have been Three our dots. tile. We need a pair there if we play the concealed hand. Flower. Under, under evens. Oh, joker exchange. Thank you. Nine bamboo. Now we have a joker. That's nice. Okay, so I think this five crack, it's isolated from all of our other potential. So I would let that go. Five characters. We have two, three, four, five bams and dots. Or, Seven characters. Or two, four, six, eight. Nine bamboo. In one suit with her without the dragon. Four dots. Two, four, six, eight would use all of our multiples while well, we have two there. Here we have to make a choice. Do we Kong or do we stay concealed and hope for a flower? I wouldn't play the first hand. We kind of have to make a choice right now. If we Kong, we could still play four, five, six but we wouldn't be able to play the Pung Kong hand, two, three, four, five, bams and dots. We have no gaps for the two, four, six, eight hand in one suit. There's one eight dot out, so we would have to have a joker there. If we play the concealed hand, we don't need jokers at this moment. I think I would let it go. I think we have plenty of options without committing to that because by committing to that, we would use our only joker and we wouldn't be able to act on anything else. I would rather gather. What do you guys think? Should we Kong or let it go? If it were me, I'd let it go. First chat. Kong or let it go? I'll just make the decision. We're going to pass. <laughs>
we need to move it all along. I'm hoping to play an oh, let it go. June, June said, let it go. Okay, let's see. Wait, what just got discarded here? Um, it's not highlighted. I wasn't paying attention. I think the five crack, we're gonna, of course, we can't pung. What just got discarded? I don't even know. I don't see what got discarded. Pong. Oh, five dot. I didn't even see no, it. No. Where is it? Oh, look, we got a Joker exchange right there. Five Seven dot. bamboos. So we're going to get that Joker over there. It's a little bit risky because we're, we're taking their only Joker from their exposure. They could maybe play a pure hand there. Okay, so let's let the, the East go. East wins. Okay, so two, four, six, eight, and one suit is, is what I think we should try for at this point. Now that we have that, or we could maybe try for the concealed hand. If we get a flower, really the flower is the driver at the Blue moment. Dragon. I would discard these bams at this point and focus Three on bad. one suit. Another joker. Wow. Okay, so let's let's focus on consecutive. Let's see here. Let's let the let's see two two four four six two four six eight mm, let's let the two bam go two bamboos we're gonna play two four six eight either probably the third hand down or if we get a flower we could try for the concealed hand white dragon okay that's a pass now that's the second white dragon out there's only one North more win we need to get a flower if we're going to play the concealed hand. Oh, we finally have an eight bam now. Three bam. So there's a six eight right here. That's in our category. Two characters. But we have a pair of eight dots. So I don't think the eight bam is going to be helpful in this case. Nine bamboos. Let's see. We would really need the eight crack eight characters. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be helpful. Oh, there's a nine dot. Oh, you know what? They're playing, they're playing one, three, five, seven, nine, and one suit. We don't want to hold on to this nine dot. That's their pair tile. Nine dots. There are two nine dots Last out now. Round. South wind. Seven bamboos. We don't need a one. One bamboo. There's a big delay in chat. Yeah. Six bamboos. Oh, that's pass. West wind. I'm thinking two, four, six, eight with all Nine these jokers. Dot. Two, four, six, eight and a one suit third hand oh. down. Nines, puns North of wind. nines. They could be playing, let's see. Pungs of Four nine, bamboos. second hand from the bottom under consecutive run. Seven, eight, One nine, character. nine. Seven, eight in cracks. North wind. And I think, let's let the dragon go. Green dragon. I think this player across from us is not going to be able to complete their hand. Four but bamboos. I'm still a little uncomfortable declaring Three someone's bamboos. hand invalid because i'm not used to playing with this Red card dragon. yet but i think i don't think i think they're playing the first hand under odds and their nines are North are wind. gone there's two nine dots out Three and characters. one in an exposure there's one more nine dot four bamboos so they're not going to be able to get their pair flower Okay, eight crack. This is where we can maybe play the third or second hand down. Two, four, six, eight with Kongs of eights. Second hand down. Let's let the six bam go. Six bamboos. Eight bamboos. Okay. Oh, okay. That's a pass for us. So this eight bam is already Four out characters. and we would need more jokers there. Four Let's see. Characters. We still can make the two, four, six, eight hand in one suit. There's a, a dragon. 
if we can get even one flower we'll, we can get close to that concealed hand with the help of our Jesus. jokers okay but here we could pung and escalate i would do that i would i would go with the exposable hand to escalate building the hand we have a gap no flowers so i would give up on the the concealed hand and pung hmm. and then i would discard the riskiest tile we have which is the white dragon white dragon so we're playing the third hand down on the left we could kong the four seven hung the six we need a little help with our eight we need one more good pick for either the four dot or the eight a joker would be great or an eight eight, bamboo. eight dot would be nice we're gonna pass we'll let that white dragon, dragon go if this player on the right is playing six seven nine nine or seven eight nine nine we Five need to bamboo. let these seven the seven go let's see seven crack one is out two two seven Four cracks bamboo. are out and eight crack is out i think we should throw this seven crack next nine characters Seven characters. Okay, now, could they be playing something oh. else with those pungs of nines? What do you guys think? I'm thinking that their right, hand right. is no longer viable because if they're playing that second hand from the bottom, there are three sevens Let's out. Win. We got a keeper. Five we need a joker in there though because one of the fours is out eight characters but if someone throws the six dot or eight dot we could act on it okay six like characters. like numbers with nines as pungs they can't be playing six the like characters. number hand with dragons because that's a concealed hand so they're not doing that four characters could it be an odd hand oh there's five seven nine nine west wind so the third hand from the bottom on the right five seven pair pair nine nine Two bamboos five seven crack but even still the sevens are out nine characters i think their hand is invalid on the right and i think the one in front of us is invalid also Seven bamboo. But as I shared before, this is my first Nine time dots. playing, so I'm a little hesitant. Flower. Flower. If we're wrong, though, it'll just cost us 25 Five points bamboo. to get more picks. Let's declare the hand on the on the right invalid. Because I don't think it could be anything else, and there are three seven cracks out. So I was right. We probably could have nabbed a few more discards. I kind of think this one in, in front of us is also invalid because with a Kong of five dots and a seven dot, the only hand they could be playing, I think, is the first hand under odds. with a Kong of fives and a Pung of sevens. I'm going to call that one too. Okay. Green dragon. So now we'll get more picks. Six dot. It's just between us and the player on the left. So let's Pung. Pung. And that nine dot is still available for exchange. That is a valid exposure. Eight bamboos. Six dot. They got our joker. Eight characters. That's a pass. Three characters. I was a little bit afraid of pass discarding that. Six dot. One bam is out. One bamboo. It'd be really nice if we can draw one of these joker exchanges. Three bamboos. Seven crack is out. 
Seven characters. So we have two more picks and one discard. We still have potential to win. Five characters. There's an exchange. Two dots. And now we're ready to win character. on an eight dot or nine dot eight if we draw dot. it. There it is. Mahjong. Mahjong. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That one we had to fight hard for. Two, four, six, eight, third hand down. Two, four, six, eight, third hand down. All right. I think we could try for one more, one more game. Please let me know in chat if you found this session helpful on how to pick a hand. If you have any recommendations on what would be helpful in these nitty gritty basics, let's play live streams, send me an email. I'm open to suggestions. My email's in the video description below. All right, let's see what we have this time. All singles. We have a flower. One, two, four, five, six, nine, and bams. Two, three, six, seven, eight, and cracks. Red, uh, a green dragon, <laughs> and a salad. So this is when you look for the predominant pattern. We could do... Three, six, nine in two suits, maybe with the dragon in one suit, with or without the flower, either way, whatever we go for. If we play three, six, nine, let's say even with or without the dragon and flower for whatever we choose. So we're going to focus on the four numbers, four tiles, three, six, six, nine. Two suits, four tiles. There is potential here for three, four, five, six. With or without the dragon, five tiles. We could do four, five, oh, no, the three we wouldn't use. We could do four, five, six, seven, or five, six, seven, eight. That's six tiles. With or without the dragon. So four, five, six, seven would be the predominant pattern here. Consecutive run for sure. One, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, seven, even five, six, seven, eight. Either way, we didn't use the nine. I suppose we could do five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, but we have six, seven, eight in one suit and four, five, six in one suit. We have one tile that we can let go of here. I say we let go of the one bam. We do have some two, four, six, eight in here too. Here's two, four, six and two, six, eight. We've got ones. Okay, so let's let the nine, the one and the three go. So we're in between two, four, six, eight and consecutive run. Oh, thank you, Diane. We have a four and a six. We got our first multiple with the six and a, another one here with a seven. So we have two, four, six, eight, but we also have two consecutive multiples. So if you're going to leverage multiples, which is the key to American Mahjong, we're going to play consecutive run because we would use two multiples. If we play two, four, six, eight, we'd have to break up the seven. So this is where you build or you target the multiples and gather tiles to support the multiples. That is the strength of American Mahjong. So we're gonna let the one go and then we can maybe let the four crack in, let's say the two bam. We're going to focus on four, five, six, seven, or five, six, seven, eight. Probably the dragon can go. We have another multiple with the five. Five, six, seven, eight. We can use all the multiples if we play Pung Kong. 
Hong Kong, second hand down in mixed suits. We could maybe play four, five, six dragon. Four, five, six dragon, four, five, six dragon. I guess it would be this year, third hand down. We have tiles we can pass, so we can keep going. We have five, six, seven, eight, Pung Kong potentially. Close to close to singles and pairs, two, four, six, eight. We would have to break up the seven crack. And that's why I was sharing that if you build around multiples, that is the key to American Mahjong. So I would not have considered the two, four, six, eight pair hand. We would have had to break up the seven crack pair. Even though there was potential there, I highly recommend building around your multiples. We have tiles we can pass. So if this, if this were my hand, I would focus on five, six, seven, eight and leverage the multiples. Okay, we're, we're looking for eight crack would be ideal. That's really the weakness that we have right now. And we got it. We got the eight. We can let the, the, oh yeah, they want three. So we have six, seven, eight, four, five, six. I think the red dra or the green dragon can go, but passing one nine dragon, that is pretty risky. Let's look at this though. Five, six, seven, eight, Pung Kong, Pung Kong, no gaps right there. Oops, there. Five, six, seven, eight, all multiples, no gaps. Second hand down on the right. And we can pass defensively. I think we should pass three for sure. And let the six go with the one and the nine. We could still play four, five, six dragon, but I would, I think using multiples, leveraging the multiples is best for American Mahjong. Four, five, six, seven, Pung Kong, Pung Kong, two suits. We've got lots of discards here, but that's okay because we're playing a hand with no gaps. Now we could potentially keep the dragon and the four for a little bit just to see what develops. We have three tiles that we totally don't need. So we can just let those go and still hold the four, the four and the dragon. One bamboo. Huh. Nine bamboos. Two bamboos. Three crack exchange, please. Three characters. Thank you. Don't forget to look at exposures because you can make it. Oops, wrong tile. Let's let the nine go. Nine bamboos. So probably four, five, six, seven, Pung Kong is what we're going to play here. We have one discard before we really have to nine pick bamboos. a hand because we could still maybe play four, five, six, dragon. Six characters. Or five, six, dragon. I guess. So maybe keep the pong dragon. Bamboo. This is the third hand down. I would pong because we have a hand with no gaps. Pung Kong, Pung Kong. Hmm. Then I would discard our riskiest tile, which is the flower. Flower. So we can pung the seven crack and then we can eight kong character. either the six or the eight. Let's go ahead and kong. And of course now pong. everybody knows what we're playing. Pung Kong, Pung Kong. We're gonna discard the riskiest tile, which is the red drag or the green dragon. Green dragon. We need one good pick one dot. for this for our seven crack. We need to con Four oh no, wait. Moves. We need to con the six. So one character. We need a six bam. Red dragon can go. Red We're playing Pung Kong, Pung Kong, five bam, six, six bam, seven crack, eight crack, Kong. Pung Kong. Four characters. Second hand down on the right. Exchange, please. And thank eight you. Characters. We'll let the five dot go. Five dot. And now we're set. We're ready to Pung and Kong. We would five use this, the Joker for the six bam. 
that's seven that's going to have to be a Kong. So we'll go ahead and Pong hmm. and discard the four. four We're eight. ready to win on a 6 p.m. Now, six these eight. robots are not smart. They might throw the 6 p.m. Hopefully, we'll draw it for more score. Seven bamboo. We're actually one away from a pure hand, which would be nice. But if we draw it, we should win. Three dot. Even with the joker. Four dot can go. Four dot. And we're in Seven the early dot. game. This was a quick development here. Four dots. We're looking for a six bam to win. A joker would be nice, too. Six bamboo. Oh, there it is. Mahjong. Mahjong. Pong Kong. Pong Kong. Second hand down on the right. Mixed suits. Pong Kong. Pong Kong. We did it. That's going to do it for this nitty gritty basics. Let's play live stream. I hope you found the content helpful. If you missed the beginning of this episode, please rewatch rewatch the video because we went through a quick presentation on the topic of how to pick a hand and why. When, why, and how. Maybe it's how to pick a hand, why, and when. I suppose you can mix those up any way you want because it would all apply because it's very situational. That's why we keep coming back for more. This game is complex, very situational. You got to be on your toes and use critical thinking to help you win. You're welcome. Thank you so much for being here. If you're not doing anything tonight, join me at 6 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to do the nitty gritty prime time watch party where we go over my results from the analysis of the national mahjong league card and i'm going to share actionable insights and give you some tips for a smooth transition 6 p.m eastern time right here thank you moderators to, uh, for helping moderate the chat and for those of you who joined this live stream thank you so much for being here I hope to see you again tonight. Thanks for coming to this Let's Play live stream. And if you're watching the repost, thanks for watching my videos. Mods, thanks for monitoring the chat. Please share about the Maj Life YouTube channel with your friends. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do, that way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.